Hello, and welcome back to Tommy's Top Shelf Comics. I'm Tommy, joined by Murphy. Hello. We're back with this week's Top 5 Comics, because last week we announced that this week that there would be comics. And there are. <laughs> this week's comics are last week's next week's comics. <laughs> or last week's next week's comics. <laughs> I don't know. I have to change it up every time, and I'm running out of ideas. <laughs> I just love it. Like I was just thinking to myself, I was like, "When am I going to stop laughing at it?" Like when? <laughs> Never. And then I, I don't think I ever. Got to keep going. <laughs> Got to keep going. But uh, we do want to talk some Spider-Man across the Spider Verse. Across the Spider Verse. Yeah. So uh, we will a... save that for the end. So if you want, it will be spoilerful. We will warn well it, we'll try not well, it, won't be, be, but... it won't be spoilerful but if you want an honest to god spider-man diehards uh take on the movie stick around yeah. stick around but before that <laughs> you have to get through our top five comics for june 7th 2023 number five june the flash 7th. 800 uh this is the final issue of this run of the flash an oversized anniversary issue concludes writer jeremy adams acclaimed tenure with special guests mark wade joshua joshua williamson and jeff johns joining the celebration as the adams race run as the adams, adams run, run races <laughs> to the finish line Get a prelude to the new Dawn of DC chapter of the Fastest Man Alive's adventures from the dream team of Simon Superior and Mike Dodota Jr. So this is cool for multiple reasons. One, you're finishing a story off that you have no idea that's going on if you haven't read it. Neither <laughs> Murphy or I have. Yeah, we don't but know. <laughs> there's a bunch of really great names on this book. And Look we get at a those preview writers. of the next and we get a preview of the next flash. So Look at maybe, those writers, man. That is just that's a that's a who's who. Yeah, absolutely. Like Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, I didn't realize I knew that they had a uh a number one coming out. I wasn't sure when. Mm -hmm. Um this is also, you know, this is my dawn of DC. This year I, I'm I'm giving each number one a shot and I've not been disappointed yet. Uh and the Flash is one of those characters I've always loved. And I've kept up with at times, and mm -hmm. I fell off over the last couple, you know, probably last year or so. Yeah. The last time um, I was, like, really, really into The Flash was definitely New 52, which was an incredible run. Yeah. If you haven't read New 52 Flash, go do that. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I read the start of Rebirth, and then I kind of fell off. Um, So this one, I'm excited to, you know, finally be at a point where maybe I can I can get back into it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and again, I, I Dawn of DC has been doing really well in my eyes, so I'm I'm pumped to see it. Look yeah. at some of those variants too. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Flash like has the Michael some cool Cho covers. one. Yeah, yeah. I like Michael Cho a lot, and his uh, that oh that art style is timeless. Oh yeah, I bought like four copies of his Spider Man. <laughs> of course. But moving on to our number four. Speaking of Spider Man, we got Spider Man number nine. So this one is called Maxed Out Part 2, Spider Sensitivity Training. Spider-Man's spider sense is on overdrive. It's driving him insane. And Electro has been one to listen when opportunity knocks. So this one, uh, honestly, I'm going to put it in all the time because Dan Slott and Mark Bagley yeah. all the time. Yeah. Um, but so this one boasts that it's uh, more spider, spider boy, uh, I guess, a backstory okay. would be the right right word for it. Uh, Spider Boy, if any of you guys haven't heard, is all the rage. Uh, selling new kid out. on the block. Yeah, new kid on the block. Kick. Yeah, so this one is uh, supposed to have some more of his story, so it's going to be a big one to pick up. Uh, I wonder how long this is going on. You know, I kind of thought I it was going to be. A, yeah, I, I thought it was going to be over, but I think that's our fault for not reading solicitations. But you know, I'll, I'll take I'll take Dan Slott and Mark Bagley getting a ongoing series. Yeah, I mean, we have we have solicitations well, up to issue eleven. So yeah, I mean, it, it seems to not be ending, and that's okay with me. Yeah, <laughs> but we'll move on to our number three. We got Star Wars number thirty-five. In the clutches of Dr. Guisha. 
Kawada? Kawada. Kawada. I don't know. You, your guess is as good as mine. You, you <laughs> sounded pretty confident. Though. Kawada. Kawada. Uh, I'm going to stick with yeah. it. <laughs> Luke Skywalker in the clutches of Dr. Kawada. The <laughs> would-be Jedi's lightsaber is all but destroyed. Enter Kyber Crystal expert Dr. Kawada. Only he can repair it, but at what price? Luke's life will hang in the balance, and only another Jedi can save him. Yeah, dude, look at that cover. I know, Just look at, right? Look at that cover. We've been we've been ready for this cover for for like a month and a half now. I know. Um, <laughs> but no, so this one, I mean, Doctor Kawada is supposed to be a, a first appearance, obviously. Um, I don't know if you guys have kept up with the story, but we're getting close to Luke getting his iconic green lightsaber. Mm-hmm. So I'm su- assuming this is going to be a big part of that. But from what I've read, uh, we are going to be possibly introduced to a Sith from the past uh, in this issue, which uh, I don't know if me saying that I uh, have been listening to Sith lore to go to sleep tells you anything, <laughs> but like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty ready to, to meet more Sith. <laughs> Absolutely. New characters in Star Wars is always cool. Always. Be- and they're always huge. I mean, they, they've got such a world to build around. Oh, absolutely. I wonder who the Jedi is going to be. Like, is it going to be Yoda? Because at this point, Yoda's I mean, not it's on dead. the cover. Yeah, but I, I mean, I don't know. It, it Covers could be are always like, a lie, though. Also, the cover, like, seemingly could be, like, you know, Luke dealing with you know, does he go the route of Yoda or or the route of, yeah, Yeah. like which way? Um, But they've also like seemingly been able to, like all the comics have done, actually pretty much all of what Star Wars has done since like Disney took over is show how bad Order 66 failed. Yeah. Like they're mad Jedi. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there there are yeah. so many people who survived. Like, sure, they might have gotten like thousands of them, but there's like a hundred. There's still a bunch. <laughs> there's like a like like we used to think it was just Ben Kenobi, Yoda, Luke, Vader, them. Now it's like, oh no, there's like seventy five others. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, don't worry. Yeah, there's plenty. Yeah. There, there's gonna be another Jedi, so I hope I hope it's a new Jedi too. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I hope there's somebody uh that, you know, maybe from like the the Legends universe and all that stuff that they're recanonizing. That could be cool. With that reconning. Yeah. Yeah. Next year they're coming out with a Star Wars card game that is going to pull from not only the movies and the TV shows, but also the comics. Hey. Yeah, we talked about we that characters a little bit. and stuff from that, so that'll be cool. We'll see now that now that I mean I don't have disposable in the money now that the wedding's done, but I bet you know. there's going to be a digital got, version of the game. No, I it's got, fantasy, I got, so maybe not. I mean, I I I'll, I might have new hobby money, you know. <laughs> Get into some Star Wars, right? We'll play some for sure, one way or another. But moving on to our number two, we got new talent showcase, the milestone initiative number one. Now we are super interested in this one we were looking through the list going up their top five and we were just like well this just sounds like it can't not be on the list yeah so this one in may of 2022 12 writers and 12 artists artists came to dc headquarters to hone their skills with some of the best comic creators in the business and one year later we're showing the results of the cohort's hard work this special showcases all 12 stories created out of the ally sponsored milestone initiative if you don't grab a copy, you'll be missing some of the first published work of the stars of the future. Now this, I mean, obviously we don't know anything about any of the writers or artists. That's the whole point. You know, and that's, that's awesome. I mean, I, I love when the big studios do this stuff um, or studios, uh, publishers. publishers do this stuff. Like, I mean, what, like Marvel does the storm breakers. Mm-hmm. And that's where we got like Pat. They've Mason. always had different names, and you know, players. like every time they do it, it's like uh, I'm always interested in seeing where they go. Yeah, and I think that DC's willingness to just kind of create, you know, because Mar- Marvel brings in a lot of new characters, but mm-hmm. like 
they stick to the the normal. Yeah, I think that DC is a little more willing to let like like go all out on new characters. Yeah, really give them um, their time and let them shine and develop yeah. as a character. Like Clown yeah, Hunter, so, just a random character that just pulled out of nowhere from James Tynion's run and is now like a big deal. Yeah. Like he's had his own issue number one. That's exactly. Yeah, so I think that DC really lends itself to young writers and artists finding their, you know, uh, what was it, stride, I guess. Mm -hmm. Sure. And, and so I'm definitely interested in seeing what this this is going to bring. And, I mean, who knows? Maybe, you know, like the synopsis says, maybe we'll see these stars in the future, you know? I'm, I'm sure we will. Moving on to our number one, though, speaking of future, we got Dusk to Dawn, Batman 136. Failsafe and Red Mask have forever changed Batman. And Gotham isn't as welcoming as it once was. Can Batman remind them who he is? Can he remind Catwoman? The future of the Bat book starts here, and everyone's world is about to explode. So, those of you that don't read Batman, here's your jumping on point. Yeah. Yeah, I think Zdarsky, I don't think Zdarsky's number one was a really good jumping on point, you know, like 125. No, and it was all up until now, it's kind of just been all gas. Yeah, they did, they did fail safe yeah. right into like, where the hell is he? He's yeah. gone. Yeah. And then now back. Now so. we're back and now we can have like a Zdarsky Gotham Batman. Also, how is Gotham less welcome? Can it be? Is it possible? Like, like, is it possible to be less welcoming? <laughs> when you make Zdarsky the writer, anything's possible. That that is fair. I just, I mean, I I love this book. I I'm one behind on this one. Yeah. Um, same. But I mean, Zdarsky, and I think with Daredevil ending too, um, he's going to be able to really push into Batman. I mean, obviously he's got his other stuff too, but yeah. I mean, now I don't think he's gonna have to split so much. I mean, he's setting up um, a Catwoman arc, like it's a yeah. Zdarsky Catwoman arc. So <laughs> I don't know. That's what I'm that's excited. what you're waiting for. That's yeah. That's I mean, Failsafe was cool and everything. The future was cool, seeing all the different depictions of different characters in that universe. But this is this is what. I've been waiting for when Zdarsky took over Batman. Yeah, is when he gets back. And also, it's kind of funny to me, Batman's the only book that doesn't get a number one for Dawn of DC. They're just like, eh, it's fine. Like, Superman, is it the Green only one? Arrow, Superman, Green Arrow, Green Lantern, Flash, Cyborg, Shazam, uh, Titans, and Doom Patrol so far are getting number ones. With more on the way. Batman got the Brave and the Bold. Yeah. That's but that's that's like an anthology. It's yeah. not it's not really it's an ongoing you know. Yeah, so Batman seemingly is did I I guess I don't know if Wonder Woman did. I don't I don't think so. But I mean yeah, we only have solicitations for one thirty seven. I don't think it's getting a number one. I don't think so. I really don't. I don't Which know, is maybe. odd because we usually have more solicitations for a couple out. months in advance. I don't know. We'll see. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't seem it seemingly if you look at the timeline that they put out for Dawn of DC. Yeah. Um, Batman's time has already passed. Right. And like Batman's time in the timeline came. I mean, it's not terribly surprising. With Brave and the think. Bold. Because also, DC isn't Marvel and they don't renumber things all the time. Yeah. Like, anytime there's like even a creator switch, Marvel will just restart. Yeah, they're just like, we're done. But. I mean, yeah. I mean, we're I'm, still on I'm the same numbering system one. as Tom King. Like, that's when it started. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm just saying it's been that long. Like we've gone through <laughs> yeah, that many writers. We've gone through so many writers that Alfred is still dead. I know. <laughs> I'm disappointed in all of them. And if Zdarsky doesn't do it, Zdarsky and I are going to be in a fight. I've never been in Zdarsky a fight with Zdarsky. Ain't, Zdarsky ain't doing it. 
He ain't doing it. He has to. He has to. I don't to. think so. He's already made. So. He's already made the jokes about it. <laughs> I mean, if anyone could do it, it would be Zabriskie. Bring him back. <laughs> Hashtag bring back. Alfred. Hashtag bring back Alfred. If you agree? <laughs> leave a comment down below. Um, you should agree, though. You should. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you should leave a comment down below. Yeah. Um, you everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you the one person that watches this. <laughs> the, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah that does it for our top, top five. five. But now we get to talk about Spider Man. So tell me, I haven't seen it yet. You saw it, so Damn. be like spoiler friendly. But whatever. I'm not. Uh, I will be spoiler free. I will okay. not say anything spoilery. Uh, it is amazing. Mm-hmm. Spider like, and kind of what you and I talked about is like Sony has done so many things wrong with <laughs> Spider Man like movies mm-hmm. like the the first trilogy was amazing mm-hmm. like uh, up until the third one we, we'll leave that i mean we got the classic dance we got the yeah black we'll dance. just we'll just we'll just like accept it you know um but then even the andrew garfield reboot the first one was good the second one was crazy I liked andrew garfield like, as, as the character though i do too but like they changed electro to the point where like he that was, was like, yeah the villain completely a different character yeah yeah. You know, the villains were just it was villains are it always was not a position. great the yeah. second one was not a great movie. The first one was a pretty good movie, in my opinion. Um but then like Morbius, they decide they decide they're gonna start making these movies with these villains and they're gonna make them all anti heroes because that's what we all really want is anti heroes yeah. that have no basis in the universe. Right. So like we get Venom, which you know, I enjoy the Venom movies just because whatever, you know. But are they good movies? No. no. Um, then the Morbius movie? Why? Why? And then it was so bad that it became a meme. Mm-hmm. And then Sony was like, well, now that everyone thinks it's a meme, they'll go see it in theaters. So they re-released it just so it could fail again. That's so sad. And now they have Craven the Hunter coming out, and he's supposed to be an anti-hero. Craven, an anti-hero. But like, so all the bad decisions they've made, somehow out of nowhere, these two animated movies are just fantastic. The first one made me cry, and I was like, "There's no way there's going to be a better right, right. one than this." Right. Like the first one, I put on like number two on my favorite spider-man movies like yeah and then this one came out and i'm sitting there i'm like no way it's better than the first one and then by the end of it i'll give it a 12 out of 10 tommy a 12 out of 10 that's pretty good that's pretty it's good coming fantastic. from you fantastic uh, yeah like it's fantastic and it's dark it's it's not it's not the light-hearted you know interesting that's okay uh, into the spider was expected. yeah into the spider verse for everything that went wrong in that movie like for the characters mm-hmm. it was still lighthearted and like fun and this one is not that no like not and it's it's a part 1 oh. so next year we get uh, i believe it's called beyond the spider verse okay uh and it's so this one literally ends on to be continued and I can't wait. Like, I don't know how they just managed to do these two movies so well. There's no way I can see the third one being bad. Is it the villains? Is it the villains are good in this one? Because... No, just I mean, I, I mean, the villains. Uh, so the villain spot. Yeah. And he kind of starts off like a little goofy, but it escalates very quickly. Right. Uh, but the whole Spider-Verse, like. Oscar Isaac's uh, Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099, fantastic. Uh, the characters they bring back, like everybody they introduce is awesome. Uh, the cameos. Yeah. The cameos alone, Tommy, are great. They let us know what could be. Um, they That's make awesome. a lot of, they make a lot of references to, like it's clear that Disney, like Disney Marvel and Sony are kind of now very just like on the same page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like th- this, this deal they've made is right. is going to work out. Right. Um, 
there are live action cameos in this movie. Like there's, it's awesome. The animation's so cool because they just go between the universes. That's cool. And so basically they are their animated style. Like each character is the, their yeah. style, but in the other universes. That's, so some are like realistic. That's cool. Some are super cartoony. Uh, that's neat. Like one, at one point they're in the Lego universe. Like it, <laughs> it, they, they did such a good job. It's still making it a fun, you know, family friendly movie, but also just insanely dark. Interesting. By the end of it, though, I would not take my kid. Like I, I don't, I don't think it's 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 not as much towards children as interesting. The first one made people think it would be. Yeah. Um. But no, I'm going again. I'm going to see it again. Like since COVID happened, I've gone to the movies a lot, but I haven't gone multiple times like I used to to see the same movie. And this one, I'm doing it. Like it yeah, I have friends that went and saw it and are planning to go see it again, but this time in like IMAX Dolby. Yeah. yeah, so that's that's the only thing is I saw it in standard. Yeah, and there was like an issue with standard, like the the sound was weird, hmm. and so I thought it was kind of just Lowe's was like you know AMC wasn't that great that day in that theater. Yeah, uh, but I've read like read articles that it's actually kind of a thing with the way the movie was made. Interesting. Uh, like like it was very light. Like right. the the volume was not booming yeah yeah um and that might just be me being used to dolby um but it was uh, it was so light that like you could really hear everything like i i told you i was in the worst audience of all time yeah but like had they been a better audience i still would have heard like people breathing right like at times it was it was very it was very quiet um so I would like to see it in like IMAX or something with booming sound so that yeah. maybe it's, you know, a little bit more movie like, but uh, it was it was truly fantastic. So to anybody out there who, A, if you've seen it, let me know what you think. But if you haven't seen it, 12 out of 10, dude, 12 out of 10. It was right. so good. Maybe, maybe I'll find time to go see it in theaters. I don't know. We'll see. 12 just, out of 10, Tommy. I know, <laughs> like, I, know, yeah. I know. Like it took it took the first one's place. I truly did not think something like I didn't think they would do better. And it like the first one. Yeah, I, I really love when he one. when he when he jumps off, he takes his leap of faith in the first one. I'm crying in the theater. This one, I was like chewing my nails, and I haven't chewed my nails in years. I'm like chewing; my thumbs are awful. Like I chewed them down. That's so, I uh, this this spider fan rave reviews. Go see it; worth the money. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think. See, I think there's a similarity between you were talking about like what issues Sony has had with Spider Man. And I think it's really comes down to the rogues gallery. Like the reason people love Batman and the reason people love Spider-Man is because they have such defined established rogues galleries that Mm -hmm. even the rogues galleries has their own like subset of fans. Like every Spider-Man fan has their favorite villain and you could talk to 10 and they'd probably majority of them would be different ones. Same with Batman. And yeah. so when you mess up the villain, you're messing up half. The movie. Well, that's what like that's what I think Sony Sony did weird is like like I'm not even saying specifically that Marvel did better with the villains so much as they just haven't done as bad. Like yeah. the the fact that you're giving Venom a movie where Spider Man doesn't even exist, right. Right. It's like that. I've said that since since they made the Venom and they told us they were making this whole Spider-Man universe where the villains are all in it. And they're talking about a black black cat and silver sable movie and this and that. And like, it's all stuff that I would love to see. But it's like it exists this in way. a world Not in this way. It exists in a world yeah. that doesn't make sense. Right. You know, like Venom sure you can you can say he's a cosmic being and all this stuff 
but he still started in a world where Spider-Man exists. Right. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, that's what I think Sony has tried to do is they've tried to capitalize on these characters that have these huge like cult followings, but they've done it so wrong. Yeah. And then like you, then you see they, they do this movie and the first one sure had, you know, Kingpin in it, which was great. But like the second one has spot. It's, it's just the spot. That's the villain of the movie. And, that's and fine. it was awesome. Yeah. Like, it was so awesome. As long as the villain's like, they done did. right. It's yeah. Yeah. Like it is, it is so awesome what they did. And it's like, look at that. Like you could stop making these crappy movies like Craven the Hunter. Aren't you happy? Aren't you excited? With uh, what? Aaron Taylor Johnson. That's, that's the dude who played kick ass who I like a lot. But from what he describes of this movie, I'm not going to watch it. Or I'll wait till it's free. Like, that's what happened with Morbius. Is like, I waited till it was free and then I half watched it. And from the half I watched, I was like, this is a waste of my life. So, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think they need, to, I, like I said, I think they need to make better decisions. And whatever decision led them to the Spider Verse movies is the decision they need to keep. Like, that's the path they need to keep taking. Absolutely. Cool. Sony, listen to me. I'm just a guy. <laughs> They're definitely listening. Just, I'm just a guy who likes Spider-Man. So just do what I tell you. <laughs> All right. Well, until next week, where this week's comics are last week's comics, and next week's comics are this week's comics, we'll catch you guys later. See ya. <laughs>